Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 2, Lesson 3, Fractions as Division. So this is a really, really critical topic to understand. The connections between fractions and the operation of division are extremely deep. So much so that by the time you get to high school and you're working with these big calculators, they're called graphing calculators, the actual division symbol on the calculator gets replaced with a fraction bar, right? Because fractions and division, as we're gonna see today, are kind of one in the same. And let's take a look at why that is, starting with some groundwork in exercise number one. Let's take a look. What whole number is each of the following fractions equivalent to explain? So I claim that two halves, three thirds, four fourths, and five fifths are all equal to the same number. Pause the video now and tell me what that number is. All right, well, each of these is equal to the number one. Right? Each is equal to the number one. And you know, you could explain this by saying, look, if we have a whole unit, one of anything, and we cut it up into a certain number of pieces, like thirds, and then we take all of those pieces, all three of them, well then we've taken the one thing. So if I take a loaf of bread and I cut it into four equal chunks and I take all four of them, then I've taken the one loaf of bread, right? If I take a gallon of water and I divide it up equally into five cups and I take all five cups, I've taken one gallon of water. So each of these numbers is equal to one. All right, and that's gonna help us make the connection between division and fractions. Let's keep taking a look at that idea. In exercise number two, Louise has candy bars that are broken into fourths. She has 12 of these fourths. Letter A asks us to express the number of candy bars that Louise has as a fraction. So think about this for a minute. We've, told, we've been told that Louise has candy bars that have been broken into four, so each candy bar has been broken up into four equal pieces, and she's got 12 of those fourths. So writing down what fraction she has should be pretty easy. Pause the video for a minute and do it really quickly. Well, I mean, it tells us. She's got 12 fourths. That's what she has, right? Louise has 12 fourths candy bars. Right? That might be kind of weird to think about, but that's what she has, 12 fourths. Now letter B says, how many candy bars does Louise have? How does this relate to division? All right, well, think about this, right? What we know is that four fourths is one whole candy bar because I took a candy bar, I divided it into fourths, and then if I took four of them, that's a candy bar. So 12 fourths is four fourths plus four-fourths plus four-fourths, right? Because four plus four plus four is equal to 12. But that must be one plus one plus one, or three bars, right? She's got three candy bars. That's what she has. And again, you, you could see this in a picture, right? You could literally say, well, you know, if, if this is one candy bar, Right? There's four fourths. These are the weirdest looking candy bars ever. There's another four fourths. And there's another four fourths, right? That is 12 fourths, but 12 fourths then is equal to the number three. Now, of course, how does this relate to division? Well, it relates to division because 12 divided by four is equal to three. So what we see is an amazingly important idea. A fraction, A divided by B, or A over B, is just the numerator divided by the denominator. That's it. A fraction is the same quantity as taking the numerator 
and dividing it by the denominator. That's why, and you maybe even have noticed this if you've listened carefully to me in the last few lessons, I almost can't help it. You know, when I look at this 12 fourths, sometimes I'll literally say, oh, that's 12 divided by four, right? Or four divided by four, and four divided by four, and four divided by four. Keeping in mind, four divided by four is equal to one, right? So any time, let's summarize this, any time we've got a fraction like this, a over b, that is just the same as a divided by b. That's all it is, a divided by b. So in exercise three, let's take a look at this. For each of the following fractions, express it as a division problem and state the quotient as a whole number. There will be no remainders. So in other words, 20 fifths, right? That's what that is. 20 fifths is the same as 20 divided by five. So 20 fifths is just the same as the number four. Literally, if I took something and I divided it up into five equal parts, and then I had 20 of those five equal parts, in total, that would be four of those whole units. Well, this is pretty darn easy. So why don't you go ahead and do B, C, and D on your own, and then we'll go through the answers. All right, well, letter B, 18 thirds is simply the same as 18 divided by three, which is the whole number six. 88 eighths is simply 88 divided by eight, which is the whole number 11. And 32 fourths is just 32 divided by four, which is equal to the whole number eight, right? Very, very important. The fraction A over B is equivalent to what we get when we take that numerator and we divide it by the denominator. Really, really kind of interesting. Let's keep working with this. All right, exercise number four. Rosie is having two friends stay the night. They want to split eight cookies between the three of them. Letter A, represent how much cookie each of the three friends will have as a fraction. Well, let's talk about this. I mean, this goes to the very essence of division and fractions, right? So we've got eight cookies and we're dividing it up amongst three friends. So literally, we have eight divided by three, but as a fraction, that is eight thirds, right? So each friend has eight thirds of a cookie. Now, that's more than one cookie, right? Because three thirds is one cookie. Each friend then gets eight thirds of a cookie. So that brings us to letter B. Represent how much each will have as a mixed number using division. All right, so this is simple enough, right? I mean, eight thirds is the same as eight divided by three. But really what that is, is if I do eight divided by three, right, I'll get two, right? with a remainder of two. Now, let's think about this for a moment. Let's make real world sense of this. I've got these eight cookies, and I'm dividing them up amongst three people. Each person is getting two of those cookies, but that accounts for just six of them, and then I have two left over. Well, what happens? Those two cookies get divided up amongst the three people so that each friend gets two plus another two thirds of a cookie. Right? And that's how we can use division along with remainders to find the mixed number form of an improper fraction, right? Because the whole number just represents, well, how much of those holes are being given to each person? Then we have this remainder, but that remainder gets divided up, right, amongst the three people, so two and two thirds. Let's use this idea in the next exercise. Converting an improper fraction to a mixed number. And we've done this already, right? We did this in the first lesson of this unit. But now let's think about it again in terms of this division idea. Exercise number five. For each of the following improper fractions, rewrite the fraction as a division problem and then write the quotient as a mixed number. All right, so let's do 32 fifths together, right? So 32 fifths is the same as 32 divided by five. Right? So if I kind of do my, my long division algorithm, 
right? 5 goes into 32 six times, all right? And I subtract, and I'm left over with a remainder of 2. That means 32 fifths must be equal to the equivalent of a whole number 6 plus that leftover 2 divided by 5. So 32 fifths is 6 and 2 fifths. And again, the idea is very simple, right? 32 fifths is the same as 30 fifths, which would give us 6, and then we have 2 fifths that are left over that we have to add on. That kind of looks almost like 2 60 fifths. Sorry about that, my, my poor writing. Let's do letter B together that's a little bit uglier because of how large the numerator is. 209 twelfths. Now 209 twelfths is again just this idea of division versus, versus fractions is the same as 209 divided by 12. So maybe I come over here, I do 209 divided by 12. 12 goes into 20 one time, right? I subtract, I get 89. Right, think about this a little bit. Maybe it's, um, I think it's seven. Seven times two is 14. Carry the one, seven, eight. Great, right? So what do we get? Well, 12 goes into 209 17 whole times, but then there is a remainder of five left over that still needs to be divided by 12. So 17 and five twelfths. Why don't you pause the video now and try letter C on your own? All right, let's go through it. 121 eighths is the same as 121 divided by eight. So I'll do yeah, a little 121 divided by eight. Eight goes into 12 one time. Subtract, I get 41. Let's see, eight goes into 41 five times. Subtract, and I'm left with just one. So 121 eighths is the same as 15 plus this extra one divided by eight. 15 and 1 8th. All right, so we can use this equivalence between fractions and division to then convert, hopefully, mixed, uh, sorry, improper fractions into mixed numbers relatively quickly. Okay, let's look at one last problem. A nice applied problem, exercise number six. A rectangle has an area of 28 square feet and a length of eight feet as shown in the picture. Its width is unknown. Write an expression in letter A for the width using both division and a fraction. All right, well, let's talk about this a little bit, right? We know, based on the last unit, that the area of any rectangle is equal to its length times its width. Now, think about this for a moment. If this had been 32 square feet in here, then we would know that that was 4 feet because 4 times 8 is 32, right? Or because 32 divided by 8 is 4, right? So if we want to find either the length or the width of a rectangle, if we know its area and we know the other dimension, we can always just say something like this. The width is equal to the length, ah, oh, sorry, the width is equal to the area divided by the length. So in this case, our width, I'll just use w, is equal to 28 divided by 8 or 28 eighths. So that's what the width has to be. It's 28 eighths of a foot. 28 eighths of a foot. Now letter B asks us to write the width as a mixed number in simplest form. So this really is the, the width. The width is 28 eighths. That's what it is. But that's kind of ugly. Like if I said to a, a contractor, hey man, go out and build me this, this rectangular pen and I'd like the, uh, the length to be eight feet and the width to be 28 eighths of a foot, that would be rather obnoxious. So pause the video now and try to find an answer that we could actually work with instead of 28 eighths. All right, well, let's use what we did in the last exercise. 28 eighths, right, is 28 divided by eight. So, you know, maybe I'll just do this. And let's see, that would be three, right? So that would be 24, and I'll subtract, and I'll get four left over. So 28 eighths is the same as three and four eighths. 
Now that is certainly a much, much better way of writing this answer. Because I could say to somebody, okay, go and build me this rectangle with a length of eight feet and a width of three and four eighths of a foot. It is technically not in its simplest form because four eighths can be simplified, right? Four eighths, both the four and the eight could be divided by four to become the more common fraction, one half. And that's really the way we want it, right? That would be very easy to say to somebody, why don't you go out and build me a rectangle that is eight feet by three and a half feet. And that would then have an area of 28 square feet. All right, let's wrap this lesson up. So today we talked about the equivalence of fractions and division. And this is amazingly important. A over B is equal to A divided by B. And likewise, A divided by B is equal to A over B. So literally, if I asked what, you know, what is 12 divided by seven, you could say 12 sevenths. That would be correct. If I said, what's three divided by four, you could say three fourths, all right? And likewise, if I asked, if I said, hey, I've got the fraction, you know, 16 thirds, what does that mean? Well, it means 16 or the result of 16 divided by three. So understanding that fractions and division are really one and the same thing will help you kind of move back and forth between them as you need to. All right, thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.